Man, I am Dave, man. Will you come on? Open up the door, will you? I got the stuff with me. I think the cops saw Who me. Who is it? Man, open up the door. It's Dave. Who? Dave. Dave. Right, man. Dave's not here. <laughs> Mark 13, starting at verse 19. For in these days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened those days. When God has to shorten the days, because no flesh would remain, for the elect's sake, the elect, those that he has chosen, and those that have elected to follow him. Where are we at right now, ladies and gentlemen? If God doesn't shorten the days of what is coming upon us, there will be no more Christians. There will be no more youth hearing the true gospel and the true word of God. There will be, there will be no flesh left. There will be no godliness left. It's getting to a point where if you're a Christian, you can't profess it, that you're a Christian because now you're persecuted for it. And if you do profess that you're a Christian, well, the haters and the atheists and the liberals and the progressives, they have their litmus test of what makes you a Christian in their eyes. These are people dictating to Christians what the Bible says. And they're only doing it for stumbling blocks. But without edification and with everybody wanting to be accepted. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not witnessing and preaching the truth and edifying the truth in the church and in Christ, whenever you speak, especially on TV, where thousands and thousands of people are watching it you best be saying it right you best be doing it the the right way and not beating around the bush either that's not what god wants but he knows our time can be very short ladies and gentlemen very short now which brings me to the main topic the changes in the Bible. Now, don't get discouraged and hear me out. There are changes in the Bible, that I have said. And where they are in the Bible now, we need to understand and start to edify and learn from the Bible what the Bible is now saying. First and foremost, there are only there are five incidences in the Bible that say um, matrix. So let's check here. And let's see. Now we have five. We have Exodus 13.12, Exodus 13.15, Exodus 34.19, Numbers 3.12 and Numbers 18.15. Exodus 34.19 For all, all that openeth the matrix is mine, and every firstling among the cattle, whether ox or sheep, that is male. That just edifies the others. Now, I'm going to start with the thing, and then I'm going to show you something else that is within this. Exodus 13:12 That thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that openeth the matrix and every firstling that cometh of a beast which thou hast the males shall be the Lord's Now 
I understand, openeth the matrix. That's not right. Many of us would go, what? That, that's womb. Birthed from the womb. Let me go on. Because what this is talking and why they are saying the beast is this here is the sacrifice. We know from God's law, God uses what? God uses the firstborn male of the family. He is the one that will get the inheritance. He is the one that will, he's the one that God will use. I'll put it that way. When it came to the sacrifice for them, for their offerings, their meat offerings, their, you know, all these, these offerings, when they came forth with these offerings, it had to be the, the clean animal that was coming forth was firstborn and male, meaning the female, the womb, the first child that that womb produced unblemished of a clean animal was used to sacrifice and offer that was your sacrifice that was your offering to God to sacrifice for your sin this is what this is being explained here this is where this comes about now when we move on to Exodus 13 verse 15 and it came to pass when Pharaoh would hardly let us go that the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all that openeth the matrix being males but all the firstborn of my children I redeem Ooh, what's that telling us here we hear the the change again openeth the matrix the firstborn male belongs to the Lord but what's the Lord telling us ladies and gentlemen openeth the matrix I'll get to that in a, in a little bit think of abortion but all the firstborn of my children I redeem think of who owns the womb who owns the womb God does womb is in the Bible 71 times still right now 71 times many references for the Genesis 2018 for the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abelech because of Sarah Abram's wife Genesis 25 23 verse 23 and the Lord said unto her two nations are in thy womb and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels and one person shall be stronger than the other person and the elder shall serve the younger Ooh, <laughs> shall serve the younger God is dictating to the Israelites and Abraham and them at the time when you look at this what are you seeing God's explaining he owns the womb he knows what's in the womb he's the one so now let's go back to Exodus real quick why is God putting openeth the matrix when you can clearly see and again Genesis 30 verse 2 and Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel and he said am I in God's stead that hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb does God have control of the womb? Is he's asking it, Rachel? It, Jacob's asking Rachel. Is is God angry? But remember, what did God do? God opened, and God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her and opened her 
womb. It's very clear. It is in the end as it is in the beginning. God owns the womb, openeth the matrix. What is God telling us? In order to see where this leads us, you can't just read that. You, you need to edify in Christ, in the church. You need to read it all. You, you need to study as God has instructed. You study the Bible. The more you study it, the more you learn how to study it. Now me, as I said, I have a study Bible. When you have the verses and the chapters in the middle of the two columns per page, you have a reference section. What this is for every single verse, you have references. Like for Numbers 18, verse 15. Everything that openeth the matrix in all flesh, which they bring unto the Lord, whether it be of man or beasts, shall be thy gods. Nevertheless, the firstborn of man shall, shall thou surely redeem, and the first, uh, the firstling of unclean beasts, shall thou redeem. So your children, you're, you're redeeming your children. Rather it be of man or beast, the firstborn, everything that openeth the matrix in all flesh, which they bring unto the Lord, whether it be men or beast, anything that is born is God's. When you're in the womb, you're in the womb, you have opened the matrix. You have crossed, the. your soul has crossed the barrier between God's realm and our realm, the earthly realm and the heavenly realm. What is man doing today? Billions of dollars, super colliders. They are going, they want to crack the code of where we began. They always claim they are almost there. We've got it. We, we, we're just about done. But when you look at the true science of what's been going on back in the day when this started and they started creating these, you know, these colliders and then now we've got this super hydron collider and but one scientist put it, he says, the problem we have with opening this paradigm, which we know today, we all know Matrix is another realm. It's an alternative universe attached to ours. Christians, we know it simply as the earthly realm and the heavenly realm. Now, what he's saying, he says, we have lots of layers here that we're peeling back as we learn and discover the truth of how that layer worked. So we think, and they've been thinking, we get to this layer and then we can unlock the next layer. We've answered all the questions. But what we're finding after billions of dollars and years of work, of research and development, we peel back this layer. We don't get any answers. We create five more questions, basically telling us what we already know. God is the creator of all things. God is so complex that man will never understand God. The Bible even says that throughout other scripture. Maybe I'll look it up sometime and we'll break it right down. God is so complex, man cannot understand or even comprehend 
the complexity of God. But what are they doing now? They're peeling back these layers, claiming that they can determine where man came from, how we all got here, how nothing exploded and created everything. But what did that scientist 35 years ago admit? We peel back one layer and we don't get any answers. We got five more questions. Now that I went down that rabbit hole, sorry ladies and gentlemen, but let's get back to why would God use openeth the matrix? Well, the reference of Numbers uh, chapter 18 verse 15, one of them is Luke chapter 2 verse 23. Listen carefully. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. Why did this change? Why did the concept of that change? Openeth the womb, birthed from the womb? God just told us. Openeth the matrix is the same as openeth the womb. Being birthed from the womb, we know as Christians, as edifying over the years, and knowing the truth of what he's talking about. But he's showing us the Bible is still true. The Bible still proves the Bible. To bring this further into perspective, I started with Exodus what? Exodus 13, 12 and 13, 15. That both now say openeth the matrix, correct? If we truly need want to edify and have the truth of what God is showing us in his inspired words all we have to do is look at Exodus 13 verse 2 before we get to Exodus 12 and 15 that are openeth the matrix we have Exodus verse 2 that says sanctify unto me all the firstborn whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of men and of beast, it is mine. Openeth the womb. Then we go down another, what, ten more verses, and it's openeth the matrix. God's warning us. All these abortions. All of this, we need to find out where we're going and... and and that is in Numbers chapter 18, verse 15. And the firstling of unclean beast shall thou redeem. They're yours. The unclean ones, the ones that don't pass the muster for, for God. But what else can that teach us today in our society today? Look at the genealogy of genetically enhanced everything we have clones we have crossbreeds where man nature's not doing it but man is now crossbreeding things for a purpose that god did not create and let me and to i guess clarify all this all you would have to do is you could talk to the biologist in the state of Maine. They were so proud of themselves. Here about 30 years ago, um, the lake that my father run the hydro dam on was a man-made lake. It started off in the 1800s. Uh, the loggers dammed off a, a small brook and f flooded a whole big valley. And that's where they floated their logs to. Well, then in the 1930s, the power company went another nine miles down the other side of the valley and they put up a hydro dam and blocked off the rest of the brook down that way. And now there's 19 and a half miles of lake. Well, through northern Maine and the in la, uh, inland wildlife and fisheries and all that, they, they've stocked it with landlocked salmon and... They've stocked it with many other 
fish and they've and there's a lot of native fish in there well what's happened in time where it is a man-made lake and there's so much debris well it's excellent for yellow perch yellow perch will choke out a a northern main lake because they have no real natural predators so when they start to thrive the adults may die off every five or six years but they have so uh, such an abundance of um, youth and you know young ones coming up and eggs and everything and they have no natural predators because well the landlocked salmon that they stocked in there they don't eat them and the brook trout don't eat them and so well they had a brainstorm and they took a speckled trout and a lake trout and they called it a splake and they stocked all these splake in the to clean up because they ate the uh, the young yellow perch so and, and something seemed funny and I'm thinking it's a cannibalistic fish beyond belief and these things they were started we started catching a few some wow these things grow fast well sure they started pretty much keeping a good check on the uh, yellow perch pretty much almost wiping out all the yellow perch but it also wiped out all the landlocked salmon and it wiped out everything else that was in the lake because it's a cannibalistic fish it just eats all the young it goes right along and it just eats 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 that's all it does is eat 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 well now they have a whole great big lake up there right full of splake and they can't do nothing with it so I'd love to see somebody blame God for that one and God would be saying I didn't create that fish you created that fish I created every animal in its kind nature through God creates every animal in its kind and you can breed different species in that kind but they genetically enhanced and changed they didn't just crossbreed two of them it was genetic crossbreeding to create a natural predator for yellow perch and instead they well basically made piranha for fish God is showing us in 71 incidences throughout the Bible he owns the womb so this change is telling us what who is opening the matrix ladies and gentlemen in America today there is 800,000 abortions every each and every year man is opening the matrix and killing the unborn child and God reassures us but all the firstborn of my children I redeem he redeems he's he's saving the children we understand God owns the womb and God puts that soul he crosses through and he sends that soul through so your soul crosses from one matrix into the other matrix and God is showing us he's teaching us in our language of today and he's reassuring us and he's edifying his own words in 71 different incidences of womb being in the Bible look at look at God's perfect design of what he did Exodus 13 verse 2 openeth the womb 13 12 openeth the matrix 13 15 openeth the matrix then it's 
said once again or twice again in numbers saying the same thing this is moses now in numbers remember this is moses teaching unto the people how it's done your for firstborn shall be the head of your brother of the others he shall be like the shepherd over his his younger siblings that was the that was the authority given unto the firstborn because the firstborn belonged to god and god used the firstborn we see that in in many inheritances and kingships and monarchies it's the firstborn the firstborn the firstborn is the heir to the throne and well that's where that all came about that was all god's design in the first place because god owns the first that's why god can raise up leaders and he can tear down leaders does god need to make say someone like hillary clinton or barack obama or how about congress let's let's have god take congress and make them all like the beasts in the fields and crawl around on their hands and their knees and eat from the the ground and the grasses and be wild that would be something wouldn't it wouldn't that be but we know that god doesn't do that anymore because god has proven himself now we must believe in god through our faith right through our faith so that's what i have on womb and oh there are